Sunny beaches, a fresh sea breeze, and shaded terraces, along with imposing mountains and lush forests. What more could you ask for in a holiday resort? Sohrani is an isolated island in the Atlantic Ocean, and this remoteness is just what allows it to keep its special charm. Much of the country has barely been touched by civilization, but the comforts of modern hotels and a vibrant nightlife are also to be found. Past tensions between the Southern Monarchy and the Northern Democratic Republic of Sohrani have eased to the point where both nations are considered safe travel destinations by the U.S. Department of State. To ensure ongoing stability in the region, U.S. troops are training the Southern Royal Army Corps. We asked one of our soldiers supervising an exercise how they like it here in Sohrani. So, how is life out here in paradise, soldier? Well, uh, it ain't nothing special here, ma'am. It's hot, there's a drill every other day, and the island is kind of nice, I guess. I'll be shit back in a week, so let me say to my folks back home, I'm really looking forward to seeing you again soon. Well, there it is from the horse's mouth. Stationed on this beautiful island, our troops ensure a safe environment for your holidays. Thank you very much, soldier. For the AAN Network, this is Marion Quant from the Kingdom of South Sahrani. Name's William Porter, PFC, U.S. Army. My company got shipped out here to the island paradise of Sahrani about six months back. Seemed like a real boondoggle at first. Lie on the beach on an island in the bumfuck middle of the Atlantic with not much more to do than spend our beer vouchers. Yeah, between hangovers, we tried to teach the grunts of the kingdom of South Saharani the finer points of soldiering. Much good as that did. Why they need us here in this sweat-soaked hole, I don't know. The commies in the northern democratic republic of Saharani, on the other side of the island, used to have a hard-on for the royal family. But it's been seven years since anyone so much as fired a bullet over the border. Theory is that training the royals to defend their country will lend stability to the region. But they mostly just want to know how to march pretty in parades. Don't understand it myself, but it beats being used for target practice in the big sandbox, I guess. Most of us have already bugged out, but my company drew the short straw and got stuck with the wrap-up. Saharani is as beautiful a place as you'd ever want to see. Nice people, sunny beaches, majestic mountains, lush forest. But there's little a finely tuned soldier can do here but rust. Can't say I'd be sad to see this place get sucked into the sea behind us when we leave. That'll teach me to wish for some excitement. One minute I'm patrolling the beach, the next me and my buddies are racing around the island. Dodging bullets, everything foobarred to hell. The Saharani Liberation Army hit us hard and fast, and the Royals got caught with their shorts down. We managed to haul ass out of the base in Corazel with most of our company intact. Under Captain Armstrong's orders, we regrouped in the town of Ortego, about three clicks due south. While the captain had us digging in, I spotted him barking orders to a special forces unit. Here's hoping they show these SLA guys who they're fucking with. This is Marion Quant, AAN Network, live from the Kingdom of South Sahrani. Yesterday, our network brought you a report on the hidden beauty of the island of Sahrani. That report was filmed roughly a month ago. We still have no official information regarding this eruption of armed violence. We just know that the city of Corzol has been attacked and occupied by a large armed force. 
No official was able to tell us what's happening, but it seems clear that forces from the Northern Democratic Republic of Sohrani have invaded the Kingdom of South Sohrani. We'll let these images speak for themselves. Stay tuned for more information. We will keep you posted. From the besieged Kingdom of South Sohrani, this is Marion Quant, AAN Network. Ortego was a total clusterfuck. The SLA gang banged us and I nearly took one right between the eyes. Another three inches to the left and I would have gotten a free trip to Arlington. I'd have been in good company. We lost a lot of men there. The SLA took Ortego and they're already pushing further south. They have the numbers for now, at least until our reinforcements show up and they're making the most of it. None of us have any idea why this is happening. The, the captain ordered us to fall back to Dolores, which Ain't much more than a bunch of fishing shacks, and he hasn't said a word since. He just keeps staring at those maps, studying them. My money says he's still got a trick or two up his old camis. He'd better. AAN Network brings you this report from a field base in the city of Dolores on the island of Sohrani. We have Captain Armstrong, commander of the local U.S. forces, here for a short talk. Captain, can you tell us anything about the situation here? The situation is quite complicated. For starters, we still have received no official word from the Democratic Republic of Sohrani as to the cause of this sudden act of aggression. The King of South Sirani, Joseph III, has asked for international help. Is your participation in the conflict the United States' answer to that request? While U.S. and South Sirani forces have taken casualties, the death toll among civilians is rising at an even more alarming rate. As you know, we were deployed to the island with a different mission than defending the country from an invasion. Most U.S. units participating in the training program here left the island several days ago. It's just a coincidence that we were present here for a few more days. Does that mean that additional U.S. units will be deployed to help you in this conflict? Our military analysts claim that there are too few troops to protect the entire island. I cannot answer that question, but I want to assure you that we are currently in full control of the situation. But will you require more troops or not? You heard my answer. Thank you. You should leave the area now. SLA forces could arrive here at any minute. Captain! Well, okay, we have some more footage for you, shot this afternoon. It appears the enemy is heavily armed and well organized. An allied counterattack seems to have been repelled this afternoon, and U.S. forces were forced to retreat back here to Dolores. As of this moment, however, a select few brave U.S. soldiers and some local forces are still trying to hold off the sizable SLA invasion. We'll try to stay as close to the fighting as possible. Wish us luck. From the Sohrani Battlefield, this is Marion Quant for the AAN Network. Ha! The captain's plan went down like clockwork. We hit them hard and fast, then ducked back into cover again. That took out some of their armor, but they still pressed us back out of Dolores, northwest towards Samato, us playing tag with them the whole way. Word is help is on the way. Our new orders are to double time it to Parezo, the royal capital, and secure the area around the airport. After all, our friends need some place to land. And now more news from South Sarani. 
Earlier today, the army of northern Sarani invaded the monarchy on the southern part of the island. The king of South Sarani, His Majesty, Joseph III, has declared the attack an act of war and called upon the northern Prime Minister, Torres, to withdraw his forces from the south. Prime Minister Torres announced that the attack is not an invasion, but a humanitarian intervention aimed at ending the oppression of the population in the kingdom's southern cities. Our on-site reporter in South Sarani will tell us more. Marion? Has anyone seen Private Porter? Where the hell's that guy? Porter! Get over here with that vehicle, soldier. Hey, you! What do you think you're doing here? Get to your position. Uh, y- Everyone, yes, yes, hold Ed. Your positions this and is Marion Quant, live from the battlefield. Uh, U.S. forces have failed to hold the city of Dolores and pulled back far to the north. The cities of Cayo, Tiberia, Arcadia, and the rest of the southern provinces have been abandoned. None of the civilians have been evacuated, and with the ruthless SLA forces closing in, we fear the worst. Even the commander of the Royal Army Corps of Sovrani has expressed his fears of a massacre. If these concerns prove valid, this could very well turn into a black page in the history of the U.S. Army and put in question the U.S. Armed Forces' ability to protect its allies. Marion Quant, AAN Network, South Sovrani. We secured the airport, and a reporter showed up on the first flight in. She embedded herself with us just as we got our orders to roll out. Her name's Marion Quant, and she can't have a brain in that pretty head of hers. She hauls her cameraman right up into the line of fire like our microphone deflects the bullets. We're on our way to the North Shore to clear the beach for the arrival of our reinforcements. For a while, we thought the SLA had run out of steam when they broke off fighting near the airport. Seems like they just decided to head us off at the beach. This place is lousy with them. Enemy in sight! Oh, fuck! More news coming from Sarani as American forces enter the second day of this conflict. The latest attack by the SLA, the Sarani Liberation Army, was held off by American forces last night. The southern front now seems to have settled just south of the city of Samato. It has been confirmed that additional US troops are en route to the region and should arrive there soon. Our local correspondent, Marion Quant, reports that the situation is still tense, but for now, under control. As you can see on this map, US forces have positioned themselves near Samato to defend against any attack from the south. Uh, I've I just received that we have... Breaking news from Sarani. Marion? Yes, good morning, Ed. This is Marion Quant, live from the coast just north of Pariso. While conducting some interviews with the royal forces here, the area came under attack from the sea. SLA forces are bombarding the coastline, and the first landing transports can be seen approaching the shore. It seems that a new front has just opened up on the north coast. Is this a final attempt to take control of the capital before additional U.S. forces arrive? Uh, It seems that way, Ed. The royal forces have been able uh, to defend the narrow coastal road from Corazol so far, but this attack might compromise that position and open up the way for, for SLA tanks to roll straight onto the capital. Um, and... Uh, once the capital and the airfield are occupied, it, it might very well be possible that U.S. troops decide to pull out altogether, leaving the South Sarani to its fate. We will try to get you some footage of the event. Take- Marion! Marion, can you hear me? I swear, right up until those Harriers came screaming in over our heads, I I thought we were all dead. As it was, most of us already were. The reporter and her cameraman were KIA soon after the shooting started. No matter how much we shouted at them, they kept standing right up there on the ridge. I'm sure they got some great footage. 
I finally got a night's rest after that, but we were up again at them the next day. Colonel Davis, our new CO, led the counterattack and we shoved the SLA straight back to Corazol. Now we just need to dislodge him from there. I hear the NDR is finally talking with reporters. Torres, their prime minister, says he had good reasons for ambushing American troops like that. I can't wait to hear them. This is AAN Network, bringing you the latest news from South Sarani. This morning saw Allied troops achieve a major victory by defending the shores of South Sarani from a large-scale amphibious invasion by forces of the Sarani Liberation Army. The long and bitter fighting has claimed many casualties, and it is with great sadness that we inform you that AAN cameraman Arthur Stark and AAN reporter Marion Quant were among them. Their commitment to providing the world with live reports of this ongoing struggle has ultimately claimed their lives. Marion would not want us to end our broadcast in the event of her death, and therefore we continue with our coverage of the Sarani conflict. We will not forget them. Attention! Colonel speaking! Troops! We didn't start this war, but by God, we're going to finish it! This unprovoked act of aggression against this sovereign nation, our ally, and the deaths of the many brave American soldiers defending it will not be forgotten. Let's finish this once and for all. Let's bring this fight to the enemy and recover what they've stolen from the people of Sahrani. Today, we will take back the southern provinces and reclaim the city of Corazal. After days of being on the defensive, it's our turn to show these slags how we kick ass! Are you ready for war? Sir, yes, sir! All right, boys, let's go and kick some ass. Now! Yeah. Yeah. Sarani Island, paradise on Earth. You've heard a great deal about this place in the last few days. As US forces enter Corazol, the city last held by SLA forces, the Kingdom of South Sarani, is free again. We have a new reporter on site, Thomas Nordwick, and we have him live from Sarani right now. Thomas, what's the situation there? Hello, Ed. The situation is, well, as good as it could be after a war, although this was a relatively short one. The people are relieved that the fighting is over and that the northern forces are back on their side of the border. But some recent events have forever changed the way these people will look at their neighbors to the north. The royal forces are working hard all over the kingdom to rebuild a thriving nation nearly destroyed by violent conflict. But they were not prepared for the gruesome truth discovered at the city of Kayo. At Kayo, we find ourselves investigating one of the places touched most tragically by the war. With us here is Captain Raboli, an officer of the Royal Army Corps of Sarani. Please, can you tell us where we are and what has happened here? Yes, this is Kayo, one of the cities previously occupied by the SLA. You may notice there are no civilians to be seen here. When we retook the city, we first thought they had a simply flat, but then we started to find graves. Everywhere around the city we found them. The people here, there were slaughtered like animals. But Captain, this was near the front line. I'm sure that the nearby U.S. forces wouldn't allow such an atrocity to take place. Or were they not here? Now, the U.S. Army was here. But they decided to move to a more strategic defensive position and leave the cities of Coayo, Tiberia and several others undefended. The SLA soldiers were able to simply walk into the cities. But 
I don't blame the Americans. Even we couldn't imagine the northern forces were capable of such a barbarity. However, this is the horrible truth we are confronted with now. This is an absolute tragedy. Yes, it is. And I call for justice here. We cannot let this horror go unpunished. Thank you, Captain. We can see that the tragedies of this war will not easily be forgotten. We have tried to ask Colonel Davies, the acting commander of the U.S. forces here on the island, how these terrible massacres could have happened, but he was unavailable for comment. We are, however, certain that there must have been a valid reason for the U.S. troops to leave half the island unprotected. Move to that. Thomas, are there any indications as to what's going to happen now? With so many dead, including civilians like our reporter Marion Quant, the question is, how will U.S. policymakers respond to this humanitarian disaster? As I said before, we were not able to speak to Colonel Davies, so currently no official statements should be expected from the U.S. forces of South Sarani. However, we will be sure to keep you informed of any changes in the situation here. Thank you, Thomas. Stay tuned for more news on the situation on the island of Sarani. The funerals of two of the casualties of this war, TV reporter Marion Quant and camera operator Arthur Stark, will take place later today. In the meantime, we have been attempting to contact several government representatives in order to ask them what will be done to deal with the violent North Sarani regime. South Sarani authorities have conclusively proven that the government of the Democratic Republic of Sarani is responsible for numerous mass murders during the occupation of its neighbouring country, the Kingdom of South Sarani. So the AAN network would like to ask why there has been no official response to these events. We have attempted to get in contact with Congressman Jenkins, who yesterday stated his belief that US troops should be withdrawn once order had been established. But the Congressman was unavailable for comment. We did, however, manage to contact Congressman Peterson and Delmar, both of whom spoke out in favour of removing the North regime from power. This evening, a studio interview will be held with these two congressmen discussing their motivations and the government's seeming unwillingness to act against this grave threat to one of our allies. Word is that Prime Minister Torres had been planning his attack since he first heard we'd been training the kingdom's troops. He just planned to launch it once we were all gone, or so his story goes. Some snafu. The politicians stepped in then, and it seemed like they were going to let Torres off the hook, as long as he promised to be a good boy again. Then we learned the SLA troops had massacred defenseless locals on their way back home. It didn't take long to confirm all this. Video doesn't lie. At least not crappy stuff like that. Soon after, we got our new marching orders. To invade the north and take Torres down. This is another AAN news update bringing you the latest from the island of Sarani. Launching an offensive into the Democratic Republic of Sarani, US forces have established a strong foothold. Our military analysts predict that if the operation continues at this pace, we could see an end to the northern regime in a matter of days. Stay tuned. The SLA is running like a crack attic on cops. Everywhere we push, they give way. We're already setting up a U.S. base in Tandag, which is north of their capital. And from there, we're heading to Eponia. At that point, we'll have all of Bagango surrounded. You might think that Torres would surrender then. Well, that's the hope, at least. I don't know, though. That would mean he's a lot smarter than he seems so far.
We're back with another update from Sarani. US and royal forces have advanced deep into North Sarani territory, and they are now closing in on the capital city of Bagango. Military sources claim that Prime Minister Torres has pulled his forces back to the capital in an attempt to defend his dictatorship's seat of power from the coalition's advance. The US troops on the front line, however, seem set to ensure that the Democratic Republic of Sarani is liberated from its totalitarian regime and begins living up to its name. Hey, Torres, we're coming hey, for Torres, you, Torres, you're we're you're coming for you. We're going to fuck you up, man. Yeah! We've got Torres cornered in Bagango. The rat refuses to come out of his hole. He only has a few hours left either way. I hope he spends them screaming orders at people who ignore him. In the meantime, the brass wants us to take down the only other pocket of resistance in the entire country. They have a camp at Obregon, which we've got surrounded too, and I hear there might be some kind of prison there. We're taking them out and we're gonna free any prisoners we find. That's the kind of work I joined the army for. Halfway into Bagango, we started taking fire from some SLA troops dressed in royal uniforms. For a moment, I thought we'd been suckered into some horrible trap. Soon enough, though, we figured it out. Our unit was the first to breach the palace. We swept into Taurus' office and found him there with a gun to his head. We stopped to watch him take himself out of the game, but he couldn't do it. Once we got tired of waiting, we knocked him to the ground and cuffed him. He never said a word. People around here all seem surprised we're not red-horned devils out to eat their children. Who knows what kind of crappy propaganda Torres shoved down their throats over the years. All I know is I'm looking forward to going home now more than ever. I thought I missed my wife and kids before, but now I'm looking forward to a little boredom and being assigned to Fort Living Room for a good long while. Wish me luck. As always, AAN Network is the first to bring you the latest news from the island of Sarani. Our on-site reporter, Thomas Nordwick, has some breaking news. What's going on, Thomas? Hello, Ed. We are finally here in the city of Bigongo. Correction, Bagongo the capital of the Democratic Republic of Sarani, occupied just moments ago by the U.S. forces. The weather is hot, but the atmosphere couldn't be better. The totalitarian regime has been overthrown by the combined forces of the Royal Army Corps of Sarani, the U.S. Army, and the U.S. Marines. And a new future is dawning for the locals here. What about the reaction of the locals? Are our troops being welcomed as heroes and liberators? Well, the situation is currently a bit more complicated for the local citizens. Word has it that the two islands might be joined as one greater Sarani kingdom. Although northern locals will eventually be brought to understand that they have been liberated, they still need some time to adjust to this sudden change. Unfortunately, not everyone will be able to witness this united future. As a last terrible act, the retreating SLA forces have laid waste to several towns and refugee camps in the vicinity of the capital. While coalition forces were advancing at an incredible pace, the Rax troops securing the gained territory once again had to face the horrors that brought them here in the first place. After the invasion and the SLA's scorched earth mentality in the final days of the conflict, there is a lot of rebuilding to be done on both sides of the border, on the streets and in the hearts of the people. Luckily, the first construction contractors have already arrived and will start turning this island back into a paradise on Earth. From a United Kingdom of Sarani, this is Thomas Nordwick. Back to you, Ed. Thank you very much, Thomas. 
Further updates on the end of the Sarani conflict will be brought to you today as the situation develops further. In other news, Congressman Albert Delmar has been cleared of charges regarding alleged illegal acquisitions he oversaw as a former member of the Spellman Fuels Board of Directors. The verdict. You know what's ironic? What? Gordon didn't make it. What? Who's Gordon? The guy they interviewed on TV a few weeks ago. We thought he was shipped back to California, but he wasn't. He died somewhere near Corazol. Shit. Yeah. Shit. <laughs>